Thank you for joining me on my channel. Please do hit the like and subscribe buttons if you haven't already. So this week, um, I'm going to be showing you a step-by-step -step tutorial of a deer in the forest glade, silhouettes on a ring paw. Um, and this is an easy one for beginners. So let's get started. This is a deep edge canvas. It's a gallery wrapped one and it's about 20 by 20 centimeters. And I'm going to be using this and making sure that the surface I'm tilting on and painting on is level, um, which it is. All my paint brands, colors, ratios and my medium are in the description box for the video, um, but I'll pop them up on the screen for you as well. So I just showed you Titanium White by Amsterdam and um, Azo Yellow by Amsterdam and this one is yellowish green. And here's the tube for the yellowish green. And that is Brilliant Green by Amsterdam again. So we've had Titanium White by Amsterdam. Azo Yellow Medium by Amsterdam, Yellowish Green by Amsterdam, and that third one is Brilliant Green by Amsterdam. And now onto a different one entirely, and this is the Deco Art Extreme Sheen. So here is the colour. I hope you can see that. And that is this one here. And then finally, we have this colour. And that is Amsterdam Phalo Green. So we move our colours off. And this was Amsterdam white. Okay, so we're ready. We've got to cut. So I'm just going to show you what I did previously. So this is a previous painting. Um, and that was the pour, the last pour I did. This was the pouring medium I used. It was a 6040 uh, PM2 paint, and the PM is one part De La Rone pouring medium, two parts PVA craft glue, and one part water, give or take, depending on the paint, two paints. Um, and they, it was a 6040 ratio with the paint. And so, with my cup um, ready, I start pouring my paints in down the side, and I'm going to have really thin layers. Um, and my paint consistency is rather thick. Um, I guess it could have been a little bit more thicker, but um, I kept them um, kind of medium thick. Um, and I'll put the consistency down in the uh, description of the video. Um, and I did do a drip test with these and made sure they were all the similar consistency, just so that my um, rings don't um, tilt out of shape if some of them are runnier than others. Um, which would usually happen. So consistency is really important when doing the ring pour. So what I'm doing here is making sure that the centre of my rings, um, which I pictured as a forest glade um, with a deer in it, was um, lighter. So I alternated the white and the yellows quite, and the lighter greens quite a lot initially because in the cup, if you think about it, the first colours in will be the last ones out and will form the centre of the ring pour. So I wanted the outer, uh, outer uh, part of my canvas to have the mm. darker greens mostly. So this is how I layered, thinking about what I wanted the end outcome to be. Um, I did put in some yellows, um, but probably not enough towards the end um, because I had less rings um, around the ed edge. Uh, edge of the painting 
um, or less, less visible rings, I suppose. I had rings, but they were very similar in colour. Um, so I think that's something to do for next time, is to really put a few more light colours at the end as well as at the start. Um, but I was just concerned because I didn't want too many light colours around the edge of my canvas, which I wanted green and, and darker um, because I was planning on um, painting some tree silhouettes in and having kind of a darker background for them. So again, just like my previous pour with the polar bears, um, the ice cave pour, um, I'm going to start tilting my colours out and making circular movements with my hand so it comes out in circles and I'm going to try and go steady and slow. Just to point out that this video has been forwarded by 2.5 so it's probably a bit faster than I normally, well, the way I poured it. So just keep that in mind when you're pouring, keep it slow. Um, and steady and very very close to the canvas if you can just so that you don't distort those circles um, that are coming out um, and those colours that are coming out um, but yeah you know have fun with it I just give it a quick torch now just to pop all them bubbles to make sure that I don't have too many kind of measles on my end painting. Um, it's always good to try and uh, mix your paints uh, a day or two in advance if you can um, and allow the bubbles to kind of dissipate by themselves um, otherwise you can have problems if you mix them last minute. Now I begin to start tilting my canvas as you can see. And again, this is sped up a little bit, so I did go very, very slowly. And this time I really thought about it. Mm -hmm. um, I wanted to keep it as central as possible with the rings, um, and then maybe lower them down to one um, edge of the canvas, simply because I wanted my reindeer to stand in front of the kind of the lighter circles in the middle. Um, but you'll see what I mean in a minute. So what I'm doing now is just tilting to each of the sides to begin with and back to the centre. And then I'm tilting to the other side and back to the centre. And then I go to do the corners. Now it's always quite a challenge trying to do a ring pour, um, which is circular, on a square canvas. And particularly deep edge canvas, you really need to have enough paint to tilt over the edge so that all of the sides, which are quite wide, um, are actually covered with the end products so just keep that in mind I'm just going over it with a torch again um, because I can see quite a lot of bubbles in the light I don't know if you can see them there um, but yeah you can see my ring light is reflecting sorry about that but yeah I'm just tilting it to the corners now um, and I'm covering the corners up a little bit so that um, there's nothing showing on the sides 
I didn't really get a lot of wastage with the paint, which is good, but I did manage to cover the whole canvas as well. Now that all the sides are covered and it's been tilted out and I've got it in the pattern that I wanted it to be, I'm just going to go over it again with a torch um, and then let it dry and then wait for it to cure uh, maybe a few days um, before I start with the silhouettes, which is what I will show you next. Um, I'm using a small skewer to kind of clean off the undersides of the painting um, and make sure there's no drips drying there before I leave it. So friends, here is the dried result. As you can see, it's dried beautifully. And the exciting thing is I'm going to be showing you some tricks of the trade as it were, on how to embellish your paintings if you're not very good at drawing. And my plan is now to embellish it. So my plan is to get the tracing paper and I place it on top and get a simple marker and simply show you where the outline is. I'll show I will just draw on here where this is.
Yeah, I'm doing a bit of research on what I want for the embellishment and I'm looking at some different images on Google for deer um, outlines or silhouettes and there's literally hundreds of them. Um, a lot of them are free and worth uh, taking a look at. Hey everyone, welcome back. So I just had a quick break just to sketch this out and I've done this on tracing paper as you can see and I want to show you something that I um, kind of promised some of my subscribers and viewers last time that I would show you um, in case you're not very good at drawing. Um, so if you're not very good at drawing, even with simple things like silhouettes um, that you might find, which are usually royalty um, and copyright free images, such as clip art images and other things, and uh, stock art images, um, there is a simpler way to do it, okay? And that is pretty simply downloading the image onto your phone or your tablet. And then simply, like I have done here, I've downloaded this image um, onto my phone and then having something called um, a sketch wizard or an optical sketch projector type of thing. It's not an actual projector, it's simply this piece of plastic, perspex type of thing. And this, and if you've never seen one of these, they're really useful for smaller projects. Um, simply because I'm going to show you how to use it. It's very, very simple. So say, for example, I remove this and I get a piece of paper um, and I pop a piece of paper down on here. OK, so we've got some blank paper um, and I want to quite simply transfer this deer silhouette or outline. Um, it is copyright free, just so you know, um, and transfer it onto my, say this is a canvas for example, and you want to transfer it over. So what I would do is make sure the orientation is the right way here. Um, put my screen, um, yeah, put my screen um, brightness up really high, and then I simply pop it on here. And I don't know if you can see from up here, but you can already see, if I turn my light off, a reflection on the paper here. Put my light off. And you can probably see it better and the darker the room is the more likely you're going to see this so i might switch the light off so you can see what i mean one second okay so i can really clearly see this um, image now i can decide how big i want this deer by simply moving it around on my phone or my tablet and just doing, for example, if I want it quite big, I might just draw that outline on this paper with a pencil. So I usually to transfer, um, using tra this um, tracing paper, I'm hoping to transfer that, which I'll show you in a minute, onto my canvas. But on paper, I would say this is a canvas and you're drawing your own directly onto your canvas. After you've done your paint pouring, you simply look through this glass or plastic or whatever it is and just simply draw it straight on and it's really really simple okay and you can do this for almost any type of outline or drawing um, obviously it doesn't pick up on really detailed things it's mostly outlines and other things but you can use it if you don't feel very confident for example in transferring an image so i can show you that now on the paper you can see that that's been transferred so on the canvas then i'd have the deer for example um, the other thing is, as well, if I wanted to do, do the other half, um, all I have to do is do that and then move it along and move this along until I match up the drawing with the, the shadow that it's cast and then continue with my drawing as so. Now, I hope this does help you. And I know a few people said they'd really like to see how um, images can be transferred easier because they're not very confident as drawers. Um, or sketches so that's another way of doing it and I can do whatever I want then on this side I can paint that or whatever I want on my canvas paper or whatever so that's pretty much how um, um, I have sometimes done it this way but I also paint freehand and draw freehand as well at times depending on what it is and how big the canvas is um, and whether it's something that's from a, a kind of a guide picture um, or something else so what I would normally do is I would get my canvas let me pop the light back on for you so for example I would just get my canvas like so and do exactly the same thing okay 
so you can do it for example onto your canvas so you can still see it on the canvas I can pop him right down there which is what I plan to do um, I'm not going to do it this way this time for my ring pour I am hoping to do it a completely different way um, and I will also show you this different way and that is simply using um, tracing paper using a very um, uh, kind of um, soft pencil this is a 6b I tend to use a 3b though 6b is a little bit too soft 3 or 4 or even a 2b would usually work so I traced a couple of different things onto here I found some trees silhouette trees um, which are free uh, and copyright free royalty free clip art and I drew some trees on try to follow the lines of the pore so here as you can see I initially drew out some of the lines that are in this pore to give me an idea where I should place my trees so um, I did some trees here and I tried to follow and I'm going to do that on the canvas I'm just going to make sure that the trees are sort of bending along with the lines of this pore just to make it fit in um, and also I've done a couple of deer as well I'm having more than one and um, I have to decide on the size and I've chased two different deer from two different sources both copyright free again um, just make sure you're, you're copying um, outlines and things which are um, available to you to use okay or you bought the license to so um, there's loads of places as well where you can get these free clip art uh, stock art images so um, yeah so I'm going to now transfer this onto here and the way I will do that is pretty simply reversing it so I initially draw, drew this on to the tracing paper in reverse knowing that I was going to put it on um, onto the canvas in reverse as well so it would make more sense so I'm just going to line this up now I'm going to get a really hard pencil so obviously initially I just used a soft pencil to draw the outline I'm going to use a really hard pencil a 2H now okay um, and I'm going to um, I can even use a 5H it doesn't matter that's sharper Okay, the sharper the better. I'm going to blue tack this onto the canvas so it doesn't move. So a little bit of blue tack on either side to try and keep it steady. Oops, what am I doing? Okay, there's one and then there's two. So I'm just going to make sure that's lined up nicely. Perfect. And I'm going to get my oh, 5H or yeah 5h pencil it's a hard pencil i'm going to make sure the d is transferred and show you how i've done that so i'm simply either going to go over the line that i've already drawn which is a quick and easy way of doing it or you can simply just sort of do this but i'll just go over the line because i think that's simpler And once I've done this, then you'll see that it's actually transferred that outline with a 6B pencil onto the canvas, 6B or I can't remember if it was 6B or 4B I used, but a softer pencil. So I'm just going to make sure I do every little bit. It's quite difficult sometimes on canvas because it's quite bouncy and there's nothing underneath it but I could pop some books or something underneath it to keep the canvas flat to make it this easier so it's leaning against something so I'm just gonna pause you and do this and then I'll come back okay so I managed to finish doing as much of it as I could um, as much as I need to I think so I'm gonna lift this off now and see if it's transferred underneath so let's have a look And I don't know if you can see that there. Put the light on. But pretty much you can see that um, it has transferred it and the tree as well. Well, some of the tree I'm going to just hand draw the rest of it. And I could just use an eraser to uh, erase parts of it that didn't come out right. But most of all, mostly it's actually worked really well. Okay, so that's how uh, that's another way of transferring an image onto your canvas. Okay, so I'm gonna start um, drawing in the rest of the tree with my pencil now, freehand, 
I'll try and follow some of these lines and make it much more interesting. So I'll see you in a minute. It's at this point I decide to freehand draw the rest of the tree. I mean, how hard can a tree be, right? You can't really make many mistakes. So I did use a couple of different reference pictures um, just to look at branches and things and give me an idea of what I wanted to do. And I did want to follow some of the lines that are already um, on the poor background. Here you can see me getting a wet wipe and wiping away the pencil lines where I made mistakes. And I just simply draw it right onto the canvas with my um, pencil. Um, and what I'm going to do then is take an acrylic paint marker in black and colour in between those lines and colour the tree silhouettes in. Um, and you see that in a minute anyway. I do hope that the two techniques I showed um, my followers and subscribers and viewers um, how to use those techniques really will help you in your drawing and confidence. It is quite hard if you don't feel you're very good at drawing or sketching, but I think those tools will help and, and you know that those methods will help um, greatly. But let me know in the comments if you do try them out or if you've heard of them before, you use them currently, or if you didn't know about them at all and plan to give it a go. It would be lovely to hear from you. And now here I am with my acrylic paint marker, which has got a 0.7mm nib. Um, and I'm simply drawing over the pencil lines I've already made um, and just colouring it in really. I mean, you can use a paintbrush and acrylic paint if it's easier. But with the kind of finer lines, I do use a, a pen marker um, and then I can fill it in if I want to. And you can do it either way. It depends how adept you are with a fine tough brush I suppose but um, yeah the, the plan now is simply to get the silhouettes onto the canvas um, just painted on or drawn on and filled in I'm just now blocking in those um, shapes um, and making sure they're fully covered. I'd like to say a massive thank you to everybody who's helped me on my journey in being more creative than I have been over the last two decades. Um, I just feel like there's so much out there inspiration wise by my fellow artists and my subscribers even and some great ideas are coming from my subscribers and viewers um, in the comments section so I appreciate all that too. And here you can see I've got a reference picture up on my iPad for a tree but I end up not even looking at it or using it to be honest because I just sort of freehand draw the tree and follow the lines of the paw there as you can see. Um, and try and fit it into the background. I didn't really want the foreground to completely overpower the background, um, which is why I decided not to add any leaves to the trees. Um, I wanted the beauty of the pool, uh, the rings behind the scenery there to come out and, and still be visible. Um, so yeah, so I hope it does that. I would love to see and hear what you um, you all think about this one. I really, really love this one. I actually like it more than the polar bear one when it's finished, but you'll see that in a minute when it's fully completed. I just want to say a massive thank you to all my subscribers and viewers because I had the wonderful news that I hit 500 subscribers um, a few days ago on YouTube 
So thank you so much for supporting me and watching and commenting and leaving feedback and saying how much um, my tutorials have helped you or given you any inspiration. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Okay, so now it's finished. And I finished adding the silhouettes in my black acrylic ink pen. Just want to quickly show you. There's some crackles appearing on them, but I might paint it over in black. I quite like the crackles though, so maybe I'll keep it. Um, but I can use a paintbrush with some acrylic black paint now if I wanted to. And um, just try and fill in the more... Um, bigger parts really to make sure it's fully black but yeah that's it i hope you like it thank you for joining me on this journey and hopefully um you've learned a few things along the way um and you've learned how to create something like this thank you for being with me and i'll see you on the next one bye